On behalf of the board of the directors, excuse me, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2012 Shirley Jackson Award Ceremony. Yeah. This is our sixth award ceremony here at ReaderCon, our sixth year celebrating both the enduring legacy of Shirley Jackson and the literature of the psychological suspense, horror, and the dark fantastic. We simply couldn't ask for a better partner or venue at which to celebrate the awards than ReaderCon. Our special thanks to everyone on the ReaderCon committee and their staff for their continued support of these awards and the works of Shirley Jackson. ReaderCon rocks. <laughs> Of course, an honor and a privilege to be associated with Shirley Jackson, and our awards would not be possible without the generous support of the Jackson Estate. Again. Yeah. I would certainly be remiss if I did not recognize and thank this year's distinguished group of jurors and those in attendance. I would like for you to stand up, please. Laird Barron, Cheshire Burke, Ellen Datlow, Jack Karinga, and Graham Slate. There's two here, aim with the rocks this way. <laughs> but anyway, I can, per I can personally attest to the crushing volume of submissions they read and considered. Thank you, jurors, for your commitment to reading widely and seeking out outstanding achievement in contemporary dark fiction. And speaking of outstanding achievements, I'd like to ex extend a special welcome to the amazingly talented nominees who are in attendance. Again, uh, if you guys could stand so we can clap for you. Congratulations and thank you for coming. Our thanks go out also to the bo our Board of Advisors for their support and recommendations and to the publishers for their uh, submissions and assistance. Uh, all right, and now I'd like to call F. Brett, F. Brett Cox, who after spending a weekend with me in the hotel is now my adoptive father, uh, to, to say a few words about the Shirley Jackson. <laughs> Dad. Uh, <laughs> Where did, your Where did your mother and I go wrong? <laughs> okay, well, good morning and welcome to what I believe is the sixth annual Shirley Jackson Awards. When we got this started, uh, back at, way back then, um, we had hopes that it would turn into what it has turned into, but uh, it has exceeded our expectations, and that's due to all of you and everybody who has so well received the awards and has been so supportive of them. Everyone Paul mentioned. In addition, I want to single out Linda Allen of the Linda Allen Literary Agency, the agent for the Shirley Jackson Estate, and of course the members of the Jackson family who very generously uh, approved our using Shirley Jackson's name on this award. Uh, one of the things that we do want to do with the award is to remind people of uh, that great American writer Shirley Jackson. I think we've had some level of success with that. I will note that this year is the, what is the 70th? 60th anniversary of the publication of the lottery and uh, also I want to note that uh, a uh, distinguished writer named Ruth Franklin is currently working on a new biography of Shirley Jackson so look for that in a bookstore or a computer screen near you some, <laughs> sometime I presume within the next uh, two to three years. Um, and, uh, Paul had also acknowledged the nominees and the jurors, I also want to uh, ask uh, for one uh, for fun final stand if, um, final stand, if every in there, we have a number of past nominees and winners in the room. So if you are, have been nominated before for a Shirley Jackson Award, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> I also want to give my heartfelt, profound thanks to my fellow members of the Board of Directors, Paul and Joanne and John Langan and Sarah Langan, who unfortunately could not be here with us this year, which brings us to that moment when I once again give you my annual reminder that I am not married to Joanne and John Langan is not married to Sarah Langan and we 
still scratch our heads over Paul Tremblay. So, <laughs> so there you go. I also want to I also want to mention that we do have these spiffy awards that we give out, but one thing we started that's become very popular is that all of the nominees each year get a rock. <laughs> this year uh, engraved with two, uh, 2012 Shirley Jackson Awards. People love the rocks. And when I say love, you best be in love, L-U-V. They love the rocks. And uh, there's always uh, periodic speculation about things to do with the rocks upon the announcement of the winners. Uh, all I can say is, you do that, I'm turning this car around and we're going straight home. <laughs> so, but... This, uh, well, it's, 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 it's uh, like many things in life, it's complicated. So anyway, uh, well, I thank you all again uh, for being here and for your uh, steadfast support of the awards, and thanks to everybody who has made this possible. And now, without further ado, let me introduce this year's uh, Mistress of Ceremonies, uh, uh, she, Marine, uh, let's see, um, she, uh, Marine McHugh is a, uh, first of all, the co-guest of honor here at uh, ReaderCon this year, and um, and she is last year's winner of the Shirley Jackson Award for Best Collection for her brilliant book, After the Apocalypse. So she is doubly suited. Yes. Uh, 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 doubly suited uh, to um, be presiding over this event and to say a few words about Shirley Jackson before we hand out the awards. I've known Maureen for a number of years. She is uh, one of the best we've got. She makes us all look good and I'm very pleased to introduce to you Maureen F. McHugh. amazing weekend. Um, I wish I could say that Shirley Jackson would be pleased about this award, but honestly, I'm really not sure that she would. Shirley Jackson wrote at a time when there was a huge gulf between genre and literature. Her husband, Stanley Edgar Hyman, was a literary critic, the critic of critics, actually and a staff writer for The New Yorker. The lottery was published in The New Yorker. They were high church, so to speak, when we were considered Mars needs women. <laughs> <laughs> but she did publish One Ordinary Life with Peanuts in our very own fantasy and science fiction. And if you have read Shirley Jackson, you know, as I do, she was one of us. <laughs> My name is Mary Catherine Blackwood. I am 18 years old and I live with my sister Constance. I have often thought that with any luck at all I could have been born a werewolf because the two middle fingers on both my hands are the same length, but I have had to be content with what I had. <laughs> Those are the opening lines to We Have Always Lived in the Castle. When I read them in college, it was like when you accidentally touch a live wire. Shirley Jackson was literature. Oh, I mean, this was the late 70s. She wasn't Milton or Shakespeare or Melville, but she was literature. And here she was writing about gleefully crazy women children, haunted houses where the ending was that someone got to stay people whose place was not that they returned to the bosom of society, but that they had never belonged to society at all and could only find a place where society and maybe the natural world was stretched thin. I was pretty accustomed to women writers being secondary. I mean, it was the late 70s. And so I could live with the idea that I, when I finally found someone in literature like this, she was considered not a major writer. I was just so happy to have found her at all. Shirley Jackson, overweight, uncomfortable in her own skin, prickly with others, extraordinarily introverted, married to an alcoholic, a woman who said one time that the characters in the lottery were modeled on people she knew in Bennington, that is, her own neighbors, who in some metaphorical way she found capable of stoning each other and of stoning her. 
You tell me this woman would find anything surprising about Sifwa. <laughs> Jackson's work is the work of a woman who expected horror and often expected horror to be infected, inflicted by community. It is the work of someone who remembered the slow reveal in America of the Holocaust. Distrustful and shy, what would she have thought about ReaderCon? Here we are, misfits ourselves, and often no one hates a misfit more than another misfit. Looking at us, a prickly person, a judgmental person might see a lot to dislike. The thing that I don't know, and I can't know about Shirley Jackson is, could she have seen the very things in this place and this award that show me, that mean so much to me, about how important and meaningful we could be for her? Um, not a great MC. You need Connie Willis. <laughs> but oh, Sifwa. It is said about academic politics that the reason things are so ugly is that there is so little at stake. And <laughs> in some ways that could be said about SIFWA. I mean, don't get me wrong, SIFWA has done good things. SIFWA mediates with publishers, SIFWA's medical fund is a great good thing, but compared to the Writers Guild in Hollywood, for example, SIFWA is not an organization with much power or leverage. It's not a union, it doesn't have a huge amount of money behind it, in terms of absolute numbers, it's not very large. There are organizations where if you resign, it actually changes whether or not you can get a job. And organizations that if you do get a job, determine your credit, your money, not SIFWA. Don't get me wrong, huge arguments and people resigning in SIFWA are hardly charged emotional events. They have, I'm sad to say, effects on friendships. But it probably doesn't mean a publisher is or isn't going to look at my next book. Oh, okay, if I make a total ass of myself online, publishers are human beings, they're gonna go. Could affect the reading of my next book. But it doesn't mean that they can't look at my next book. Mostly it means a lot of the very ugly behavior that Shirley Jackson wrote about. But here's what I would want Shirley Jackson to see. I would want her to see that bad things happened at this convention a few years ago. And as she would have predicted, things got sort of ugly. The community split, people made mistakes. But guess what? It didn't stop. The community of fans and convention folk kept trying to make it right and are still trying to make it right. Though it's ugly. People I know and care about on both sides have been hurt. People I know and care about on both sides have failed to cover themselves in glory. But you know what? I feel safe at ReaderCon. Things I took for granted as the way things are suddenly aren't. And more importantly, people are still trying very hard to work things out. And although there have been some stones thrown, the majority of people aren't throwing stones. The majority are trying very hard to make places that are safe from stone throwing. Shirley, will you look at that? And look at the work on this ballot. Look at the way the walls have fallen between the high church of literature and genre. Look at all the people who can be heard and read. It's a funny thing about science fiction and fantasy. I still get people who say things to me like, your work isn't really science fiction. When people say that about my first novel, it's kind of hard to know what to say. It takes place in the future, part of it's on Mars. <laughs> but I know what they're trying to say is, I like your book. <laughs> what I really want to say to them is, look, the war between science fiction and literature and genre in literature is over. Do you watch TV? Do you go to the movies much? Did you see Iron Man 3? Ever watch an episode of Buffy? or Harry Potter, we won the war. We are in your zeitgeist. <laughs> Shirley Jackson was like us, an outsider, a person who thought she didn't fit, but the truth is we are all outsiders. We always thought that the kids we thought were popular kids felt like insiders, but you know, it turns out they didn't. Almost everyone is faking it. Some people deal with that by looking for entertainment about insiders and fantasizing that they are part of that. Shirley Jackson